Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alana. If you're not new, welcome back. Thank you so much for watching. I have not filmed a YouTube video in literally so long, I couldn't even tell you. Um, my life has just been so busy and so much has changed since the last time I was on here. Honestly, I don't even really know where to start. I graduated school, I got a new job, I started my career. The biggest news is that I bought a house. For those of you who know me, you know that one of my biggest life goals has always been to buy my own home. Um, I finally did that and it happened a lot sooner than I anticipated, but I am so thankful that I was able to make this purchase and I just feel so lucky and blessed. I've been working towards this goal for a long time now and now I kind of just wanted to share with you guys the process of what I went through and you know like how to prepare for this moment. So if you want to learn how I bought my first house at 21, just keep on watching. Okay, so my first tip for wanting to buy a house is to set a realistic goal. You want to set a realistic goal of the time frame that you want to purchase a house in, um, for what your budget is, what kind of home you're looking for, if it's an apartment, if it's a condo, if it's a single family home, um, kind of just what works best for your needs. I decided back in high school that I wanted to buy a house. I remember talking to my mom and thinking that it just didn't make any sense to pay rent. And I was like, mom, I wanna buy a house when I'm in my 20s. And she's like, okay. From then on, we kind of just started planning about like the things that I needed to do in order to be able to be in the position that I'm in today. Um, honestly, my mom is the most amazing person I've ever met in my life. And there's no way that I would be here today without her. So mom, if you're watching this, shout out to you and I love you. My goal was to buy a house by the time I was 25. It obviously happened four years early and I really wasn't expecting that, but I feel like the events in my life just led me to this moment a lot sooner than I had thought. 25 was kind of pushing it. I did think that I would get it before 25, but I would have guessed like 23 maybe. I don't know. Things just happened and you know, I feel very blessed to be in the position that I'm in. I think that a big thing is obviously saving money because you need to be able to save money for a down payment for your house. And then also just like the expenses that come with being a homeowner. You need money for your down payment and then for utility bills and obviously your normal mortgage payment for cable, for Wi-Fi, for a security system if you have one. Literally every single thing that has to do with the house, landscaping, exterminators, all of that is included in what your monthly fees are. It's not just the mortgage payment. And there's a lot of unexpected expenses, even just like furniture and decorations for the house it adds up and it is very expensive to fully furnish a home right off the bat so just keep that in mind also if you're buying a property and there's things that you want to change about it number one it takes a lot of time and number two it takes a lot of money so just keep that in mind if you need tips on how to save money um i do have a video that i made probably about a year ago now on how to save money mostly everything I say in that video still stands but I mean I've grown up since then and there's definitely things that I've learned um since then that have really helped um so if you guys want a part two on that video I would love to make an updated version of like what is helping in my adult life versus when I was a teenager saving money one of the biggest things that I talked about in that video that I got a lot of backlash for is that I said to not get a credit card um I do have a credit card when I said that at the time, honestly, I don't remember if I had a credit card or not. And I don't really remember what I said in the video. I just remember that I got a lot of comments talking about that part of my video. So keep in mind when I made that, it was like a year or two ago. And 
I was referring to how I saved money when I was in high school. Like that was the money that I had saved by the time I was 18. So like at the time I couldn't even get a credit card if I wanted to because I wasn't old enough. But I do think that credit cards are a great way obviously to build your credit score, which you do need a good credit score to be able to buy a house. Um, but I don't think that you should put anything on your credit card that you aren't able to pay off in cash already. I think that was probably one of my big tips that I gave before. I always say that if you can't afford to buy something twice, you can't afford to buy it at all. Obviously this doesn't include like big purchases like cars and homes and whatever else, but you know what I mean? Um, like you shouldn't just go shopping and then put everything on your credit card when you don't have that money in your checking account because that's kind of irresponsible. But I do want to make a video on how to build your credit score. So if that's also something you guys are interested in, just let me know because there's so many little things that you can do to build your credit. There's also a lot of things that you can do um, unintentionally that will hurt your credit score. The moral of the story is that you just want to make sure that you have a good credit score because at the end of the day, if you have bad credit, you're probably not going to get approved for a loan. Um, if you did get approved for a loan, you would most likely need somebody else to sign on the loan with you, which might not be an option for everybody. Um, I personally would also rather just not have someone have to co-sign a loan for me. I want to be able to be self-sufficient and not have to depend on somebody else in order to get approved. Um, but that is just me personally. If you need somebody to co-sign on your loan, there's nothing wrong with that. Another big tip I have is to start buying like little things for the house before you actually start house shopping. I obviously knew that I wanted to buy a house within the next couple years. Um, I got really excited, so I started very early, but I would just go to the store and whenever there were things on sale, like for like my kitchen or just like basic things that I knew I would need, I just started buying like little bits at a time. So when I moved in, I already had like dishes, like I had plates and bowls and cups and just like basics where it doesn't really matter what your house looks like. I didn't buy like a couch or any kind of furniture or anything that you'd have to like measure and like see if it fits in the space and whatever, but just basic things like that. Um, and it really helped to cut down on expenses when I first moved in because I already had a lot of stuff that I already bought. All of that little stuff is not super expensive but it does add up very 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 quickly my next tip is to wait until you're really ready to buy a house it's very exciting and you know it's fun and you get to have your own property so you can kind of do whatever you want to it which is all super fun but it is a huge responsibility i feel like i didn't necessarily realize all the things that came with being a homeowner until i was kind of thrown into it not that i don't think that i'm ready for it but it definitely opened my eyes up to homeownership and you know it's a large commitment and a lot of responsibility and realistically some people just might not be ready for it you really want to make sure that you are solid in your job or your career and that you are able to make monthly payments on your house it's usually a 20 or 30 year loan and that's a long time like my loan is for more years than i've even been alive so to think about something that's that large of a commitment is kind of overwhelming at times another huge thing is having a strong support system my mom and my stepdad helped me so 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 much when i was moving and just getting prepared to buy a house they have helped me so much and there's literally no way that i would be here without them i had so many friends who also came and helped with so many different things i just am so appreciative for all the amazing people in my life i feel like this chapter in my life has shown me who's really there for me and who isn't and a support system goes a long way because this process is very overwhelming it's very tiring there's so many different moving parts that sometimes it's very stressful so i think having people who are there for you to just support you is super 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 important because there's no way i would have been able to go through this all by myself 
So once you decide that you are ready for the commitment of buying a house and you feel like you're established in your career and your life is together and you're ready to start house shopping, the first step in the process of actually home buying is to get pre-approved for a loan. This will help you to know what your actual budget is for the house because you'll have a closer idea of what a bank um, or loan company would actually give you. I would recommend shopping between different loan officers and kind of seeing who can give you the best deal because there's a lot of things that will change. You can get better interest rates from different companies. A lot of people recommend getting like several different pre-approvals just so that you can kind of weigh your options and see what works best for you. Once you get pre-approved for a loan, it's super exciting because then you feel like you actually can start shopping. Once you know your budget, um, don't look at houses that are outside of your budget. I know that kind of sounds pretty obvious but it is easy to just go online and look at houses and neighborhoods that you love and sometimes they're not in your budget and that's just life you can set like parameters on like zillow and realtor.com and things like that um for whatever your maximum budget is if you look at houses that are outside of your budget sometimes it can make you feel discouraged because like that's something that you love, but you know you can't afford it. So what's the point in looking at it? But trust me, if you just keep looking and be patient, you will find a home that you love that is in your budget. There's so many different factors that you need to take into account when you're looking for a house. Obviously, you want to love the neighborhood. You want to make sure it's in a good school district if you want to have kids. And even if you don't want to have kids, the school district might matter a little bit if you try to sell the property because whoever you're going to sell to might have kids and you want to make sure that it's in a nice area. If you go online to like Realtor or Zillow, you can see the crime in the area just to know if it's like a safe neighborhood or not. You can see what kind of groceries stores or just like restaurants and stuff are around you um, gas stations just convenience to whatever you need to go to obviously the value of the house the size of the house if there's room for expansion one thing that I love about my home is that it has a very big backyard so there's a lot of room to do different things to increase the value of my home eventually I want to build a guest house in the back because then that can be another stream of income or just extra space it'll increase the value of my home these are all things that you want to be thinking of when you're buying a house, not just instant gratification. A house is an investment and it's probably one of the biggest investments you'll make in your life. So it is a very big decision and you want to make sure that the place that you're in will allow you to grow and that you won't just feel like you're stuck in this property. So once you actually start house shopping and you want to start looking at properties, it's really important to find a realtor that you love. It's super important to find somebody who understands you and that you get along with because you do spend a lot of time with them and you do need to be able to trust them and feel like you can rely on them because at the end of the day, they're working for you and their job is to make sure that you're happy and that you're satisfied with your purchase. Once you start putting offers in on houses, um, especially in today's housing market, it's easy to feel discouraged because a lot of times offers won't get accepted right away. I think I put in probably like five offers on different properties before I found this one. I was house hunting for a few months. It was exhausting. I was literally going almost every single day or at least like every weekend to look at like five or ten different houses it's tiring and there's a lot of options and it's overwhelming and then you find a place that you love and you think that that's it for you and you put in an offer and it doesn't get accepted or they already took someone else's and it's just exhausting and sometimes it's really discouraging there were times that i was super upset because i 100 percent thought that i found my home and it didn't work out at the end of the day it led me to where i'm at now and i love my house so much and there i couldn't even see myself living in any of those other properties when you are looking for houses make sure that you come up with a list of non-negotiables and do not settle for those there are things about the house that you won't be able to change for me i wanted to have at least two bathrooms because i don't like sharing my bathroom with people who are staying in my house i like my things separate and just to have my own space so it was super important that I had two 
two bathrooms. If you have the square footage in the house, it is possible to build another bathroom, but that is a lot of work and it's a lot of money. There are certain things that you wanna make sure that you don't settle on because it's kind of difficult to change. Obviously, it'll be difficult to find a house that has every single thing that you want exactly the way that you want it. When I bought my house, I hated the color of the walls, so I painted them myself. Things like that you can change fairly easily, but if the structure of the house is not good or if there's like plumbing issues or air conditioning issues, like those are bigger problems that are more expensive to change. Once you do get your offer accepted, do your research on like the closing process of the house once you're actually under contract. I feel like I literally knew nothing about closing so it was a little bit stressful because i didn't really know what to expect um it's kind of like a weird process and everything like happens so quickly all at once and then like you just hear nothing for like days and then like it's like so quick and a bunch of things to do and then it's like nothing it's super important to take your inspection and your appraisal process seriously i didn't really know what came with the home inspection but it i learned so much about my house in the inspection process and it is a very big decision to make because once you finish the inspection and if you agree that you want to keep moving forward with the process you're kind of contractually locked in you can't just decide like to back out for no reason or else you'd lose your earnest money i'm thankful that i had my stepdad to help me through the process because he works in construction and so he knows a lot about what the inspector was talking about when i got my inspection report back i didn't know what most of the things even meant so it was nice to have somebody to be able to tell me what was actually a big deal and what wasn't i was lucky that the sellers of my home were willing to actually make some changes from the inspection a lot of times I've been hearing in the market today that a lot of people are just buying the house as is without an inspection. That kind of stresses me out because I don't want to just walk into something that I'm not ready for. So I'm really thankful that I had sellers that were so willing to negotiate with me on the things that needed to be repaired before I moved in. Once you close on the house, you should really have realistic expectations of moving in and settling in. Even just like painting the house when I first moved in, took significantly longer than I thought and it was very it was very tiring on my body mentally physically um financially just exhausting let your friends and family help you because they are proud of you and you worked so hard for this accomplishment and everyone just wants you to be settled in so that you can enjoy the space that you've Bought. If you made it to this point and you have finally bought your house, you've moved in, just remember to pause every once in a while, take a deep breath and just soak in this experience. You have worked so hard to get here and you should be so proud of yourself. It's important to remember that not everything has to get done at once. I keep on telling myself like I have at least 30 years until this loan is paid off. So I have 30 years to do all the things that I want to do to this home and more. It's a lot of hard work and a lot of time and effort that you put into this to be able to have an accomplishment this big and you really should be proud of yourself and you should be able to take breaks from your busy life and enjoy it. So that is all the advice that I have for you new and future homeowners. I hope that this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, I have been sharing a lot of DIY things on my Instagram. So if you are interested in seeing the things that I've done to my house, just go ahead and follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is just Alana Lumark. It's just my name. Um, but I will leave that in the description box below. I do want to do a house tour, but I didn't film an unfurnished house tour before I moved in. And now it's like half furnished. So I feel like I'm just going to wait a little bit until everything's a little bit more settled and then show you guys 
all at once everything that I've done to the house and how it looks but for now you can just refer to the pictures that I have on my Instagram I know that I haven't been very active on YouTube lately but I still do notice whenever I get new subscribers and when people comment on my videos I notice all of the positive things that everyone says I just feel like you guys have still been so supportive even though I've taken so much time off and it makes me so happy and just makes my heart full. And so I'm so thankful for you. And I am hoping that now that I'm finally like settling into this new life and everything's a little bit less chaotic, that I'll be able to start filming more regularly like I used to. I hope that this video helped you guys and gave you some perspective. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Like I said before, I will be filming another video about financial advice, kind of an updated version. I can also make a video about improving your credit score. If you have any other video suggestions or things that you wanna see from me, leave those in the comments as well. And I am definitely open to filming whatever it is that you guys wanna see. Thank you so, 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 so much for watching and I love you guys and I will see you in the next one.